what they've been able to do is expand in, into areas of great weakness. And because they're uh, dedicated, because they have resources, because of their like, simple message, they were able to uh, expand rapidly uh, in, in these areas, defeat weak opponents, and give the appearance of great strength and, and great effectiveness or whatever. Uh, when it runs into serious military forces, uh, serious resistance, organized resistance, uh, it doesn't do so well. So I think their ability to take areas uh, on the bounce, uh, like they have in Syria and in, in Iraq especially, really isn't there. Uh, there is, I think, a definite uh, danger of, over time, of ideological penetration, of developing adherence inside some of the countries on the border, uh, working with them to destabilize uh, the current governments, and I think in particular Jordan you know, might be a target for that. The space that they control inside Iraq and Syria you know, gives them some potential for penetration of the, uh, of the areas adjacent to that space. They could do that ideologically by seeking out adherence uh, you know, for their cause, by working with Islamist extremist groups or Islamist fringe groups. Uh, try and develop a core of support in, in those areas. They're probably already doing this to some extent. They have some indications of this in Jordan and in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, they could also try and develop military capabilities for you know, guerrilla-type warfare or terrorist-type activities uh, in, in these countries. They're probably going to have some you know, minor success, I think, in, in doing that. But the, the other side of that coin is that the security forces of all the countries, basically, that border the so-called Islamic State are pretty effective. They have pulled in a lot of foreign fighters, including a lot of foreign fighters from Western countries. And the ones that aren't killed or don't stay inside the Islamic State, uh, they could go home and they could become a threat to the countries they're coming from, like Belgium or the UK or even the US. So they're a potential terrorist cadre or, or element inside this country. Again, though, the, the security services of, of all these states are, are pretty well aware you know, of that threat. They focus on it. They talk about it. They're actively engaged, I think, in, in trying to identify these people, track their movements and so on. Uh, there's for sure, there's no, you know, 100% guarantee that you can, you can stop you know, all of this kind of activity, uh, that you can prevent IS from ever exporting any kind of um, terrorist uh, type operations. But I think you can limit it and you, and you, can, you can actively work against it. Uh, the greater danger you know, for, the, for other states, let's say, is where the security services are weak or really not up to the challenge of dealing with this kind of threat. Uh, and those might be some, some states in, in uh, you know, Eastern Europe, perhaps, uh, maybe in Latin America and so on. But I still don't think there's a huge um, you know, threat that we're going to see terrorists boiling out of the Islamic State headed in all directions to you know, wreak havoc and destruction.